The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the workflow for the BioMariu Gene Up Listeria Assay. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, requires strict laboratory protocol and procedures to prevent contamination and ensure accurate results. Utilization of a laminar flow hood or a clean room for sample preparation and PCR steps are recommended. Note, for this video, steps are performed not utilizing a laminar flow hood to better demonstrate the steps. Adhere to your facility's policy on wearing personal protective equipment, or PPE, when performing PCR testing. Protective gowns, masks, and powder-free latex or nitrile gloves are recommended with changing gloves frequently to prevent cross-contamination. Part 1. Preparing your samples for incubation. For this video, we will be demonstrating the workflow for the matrix samples of deli ham, deli turkey, beef hot dogs, breaded chicken nuggets, fresh bagged spinach, fresh bagged lettuce, cooked shrimp, smoked salmon, Mexican soft cheese, and vanilla ice cream. Always refer to the package insert for the correct procedure applicable to your sample type. Required materials, LPT broth, filtered enrichment bags, paddle blender, incubator set to the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius plus or minus one degree Celsius. Samples. Begin by labeling your sample bag with the sample name or ID number. To avoid contamination, never reach into the bag. Aseptically open the bag. The bag is separated by a lateral filter. It is important for you to put your sample into only one side of the filter. Note, there are different types of filter bags available to use. If the filter is in the way, push it to the side with a sterile implement or pinch the filter from the outside of the bag and pull to the side. Next, add sample to one side of the bag until you reach 25 grams. Allow the LPT broth to come to room temperature prior to enriching samples. Add 225 milliliters of room temperature LPT broth to the sample and close the bag. Place the sample in the paddle blender and homogenize for 60 seconds. Remove the sample from the paddle blender and place into an incubator set to 35 degrees Celsius plus or minus 1 degree Celsius. Ensure the bag is closed during incubation. Incubate for 22 to 26 hours in an upright position. Part 2. Sample Lysis. Required materials. Your enriched sample, 20 microliter pipette and filter tips, Trumner Vortex type mixer, Trumner Vortex mixer adapter, Gene Up Lysis Tube Holder, Gene Up Heavy Rack Holder, Gene Up Lysis Tube Remover and Capper, Gene Up Lysis Kit. Before we begin, you will first need to create a sample work list. Once the sample work list has been created, click on the Auto Plate button on the Work List icon bar. The plate map will update to include your samples and then name your run. Click on the box to scan lysis kit located below the plate map. Remove the lysis kit from the storage area. Scan the barcode of the lysis kit. The lot number and expiration date will automatically populate the fields. Next, click on the Save button to save. Allow the kit to come to room temperature. Note, if you are using a new kit, Ensure that the sealed foil pack is vacuum sealed and the desiccation pack is present. The Gene Up Lysis Kit should be stored at 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. After opening the kit, if stored at 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius, the kit can be used until the expiration date. Note, after opening, the kit can also be stored at room temperature, 15 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. If stored at room temperature, the kit should be discarded after three consecutive months or until the expiration date, whichever comes first. Note, if stored at room temperature, do not store the kit back at 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. Never open the lysis tubes with magic caps. If a lysis tube is open or is leaking, it is considered a contamination event and should be discarded into a biohazardous waste receptacle. Place the lysis tube holder into the heavy rack holder with the notch oriented in the H1 position. 
aseptically remove the lysis tubes from the bag by pushing them out instead of reaching into the bag to pull them out. Remove the required number of lysis tubes from the rack by using the edge of the heavy rack holder to push them out of the rack. Next, place a lysis tube for each sample in the GeneUp lysis tube holder according to the plate map. Note, if less than eight tubes in a strip are required, the strips can be cut apart and only the used tubes are placed in the GeneUp lysis tube holder. Return any remaining lysis tubes to the foil pack and place back into the kit box. If the tubes are clear, shake to resuspend the die. Using the capping tool, press down on the tubes to secure them in the lysis rack. Visually inspect the lysis tubes for liquid that may be adhering near the top of the magic cap. To force the liquid to the bottom of the tube, remove the lysis rack from the heavy block and swing the tray down, then immediately stop. Place the lysis tube holder back onto the heavy rack holder. Visually inspect the magic cap to ensure there's no liquid on the magic cap before adding sample. Massage the sample for 15 to 20 seconds to homogenize the sample into the enrichment broth. Next, using the 20 microliter pipette and a filtered tip, withdraw 20 microliters of the sample from the filtered side. Transfer the sample to the lysis tube and lightly pierce the center of the magic cap, depressing to the second step of the pipette plunger. Keep the pipette plunger depressed as you remove the tip from the magic cap. Ensure not to insert the pipette tip too deep into the lysis tube. Visually inspect the tubes for any liquid that may have escaped from pipetting. If liquid is present, remove by dabbing the top of each affected tube with an individual sterile, lint-free swab. Remove the lysis tube holder from the heavy rack and place the plate onto the vortex adapter and ensure that the black fins of the vortex adapter lock the lysis tray in place. Vortex for 5 minutes at 2200 RPMs. Remove the lysis tube holder from the vortexer. Visually inspect the lysis tubes for liquid that may be adhering near the top of the magic cap. To force the liquid to the bottom of the tube, remove the lysis rack from the heavy block and swing the tray down, then immediately stop. Lysed samples are ready to be tested. Lysed samples are stable for 72 hours if stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Part 3. Sample PCR. Required materials. Your lysed samples. Gene Up Heavy Rack Holder, 10 microliter pipette, 10 microliter Gene Up tips, Gene Up Listeria PCR reagent, Gene Up PCR tube holder, Gene Up lysis tube remover and capper. Before starting the PCR step, ensure the Gene Up self test has been run. If working with refrigerated samples, allow samples to come to room temperature. Visually inspect the lysis tubes for liquid that may be adhering near the top of the magic cap. To force the liquid to the bottom of the tube, remove the lysis rack from the heavy block and swing the tray down, then immediately stop. Place the lysis tube holder into the heavy rack holder with the notch oriented in the H1 position. Visually inspect the septa of the lysis tubes for any drops of liquid that may have escaped during vortexing. If liquid is present, remove by dabbing the top of each affected tube with an individual sterile, lint-free swab. Retrieve the assay kit and proceed with scanning the kit barcode into the GeneUp software. Aseptically remove the PCR tubes by pushing them out of the bag instead of reaching in and pulling them out. Seat them in the positions labeled on the plate map. Return unused PCR tubes to the foil pack with desiccant and return them to their storage area. The content of the pouch is stable for two months after opening if the pouch is correctly sealed and stored according to the recommended conditions. Take the sealed strips and gently tap the bottom of each one on the counter to ensure that the freeze-dried pellet is seated at the bottom of the tube. Wearing new powder-free latex or nitrile gloves, carefully open the caps to prevent spilling the freeze-dried pellet. If a pellet is lost, cut to remove the tube and replace with a new one. Visually check for the presence of the freeze-dried pellets at the bottom of each tube. 
The pellets, if present, will be a light blue color. Replace any affected tubes. Using a single channel pipette. When using a 10 microliter single channel pipette, depress the pipette plunger to the first stop. Note, it is important to depress the pipette to the first stop before piercing the septum to avoid disrupting the beads that are located at the bottom of the lysis tubes and aspirating them into the pipette tips. Pierce through the septum of the lysis tube. With the tip down as far as possible in the liquid, slowly release the plunger to aspirate 10 microliters of the lysed liquid. Pull the pipette out from the lysis tube using a multi-channel pipette. When using a multi-channel pipette, attach the required number of pipette tips to match the number of samples you will be pipetting. Note. Make sure the volume to dispense on the multi-channel pipette is set to 10 microliters for the assay. Depress the pipette plunger to the first stop. To ensure stability, align the multi-channel tips with the septum of the tubes. With your non-dominant hand, gently press down on the wider section of the multi-channel pipette to pierce the septums until you cannot go any further into the liquid. Slowly release the plunger to aspirate 10 microliters of the lysed liquid. Pull the pipette out from the lysis tube. Note, it is important to not push past the first stop on the pipette when aspirating liquid, as it will lead to withdrawing the incorrect volume. Visually check the volume in the pipette tips and dispense the liquid two-thirds down the wall of the corresponding PCR tube. Once you have finished pipetting the lysed samples into all of the open PCR tubes, Place the optical caps on top of the open PCR strip. Wearing new powder-free latex or nitrile gloves, aseptically remove the optical caps by pushing them out of the bag instead of reaching in and pulling them out. Return any unused optical caps back into the plastic bag and return them to the reagent box. Place the optical caps on top of the open PCR strip. Work with one strip at a time to avoid risk of cross-contamination, changing gloves between sample strips. Using the capping tool, center the tool on the optical caps and apply pressure to ensure the caps are fully closed. Visually inspect that the caps are completely flush and tightly sealed. Repeat for all samples. Spin the tubes down for 10 seconds at full speed. Note. Always make sure the spinner is balanced by placing a second PCR tube holder into the other side of the spinner. The PCR and lysis mix tubes are stable for up to 2 hours at 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Place the tray into the heat block of the thermal cycler. Make sure to line up the A1 position from the PCR tube holder to the A1 position on the heat block. Push down on the four corners until you hear the click and the tubes are free from the plate. Close the door and start your run in the software.